Good evening. Thank you for joining us for tonight's Inspiration webinar. Inspiration Software is the embroidery software line of G7 Solutions and Designs and Machine Embroidery. Our Inspiration Software line includes My Block Piecer, My Quilt Embellisher, Perfect Embroidery Pro, Perfect Stitch Viewer, Word Art and Stitches, and My Quilt Planner. Tonight's webinar is Get Out Your Library Cards. We have a wonderful team assisting us tonight. Inspiration Tech Support Team, Nancy R., Chris L., Catherine A., and Dory N. I would like to present you to our Inspiration Consultant and Librarian, Tamara Evans. Take it away, Miss Tamara. Thank you so much, Dory. Um, and actually, I have been a librarian. That was my job in college was I worked in the vast collection of business history. It was great because they had an IBM typewriter so I could type my papers, you know, the kind that had the correction that, you know, nobody had at, um, in the dorm or at the uh, sorority house I lived in. So I'm dating myself. I will stop that now, except for one thing. Um, when we talk about library cards, we're talking about the libraries that are in the software, as well as the catalogs. And for our purposes this evening, those are basically the same thing. For any um, youngsters that are joining us, they may not know what a card catalog actually was, um, physical cards that you looked up you know, by, by author's name or subject, um, the book. And they were little cards in a file that make great drawers for notions, if you can run across them um, at any time, but I'm digressing, so let's get back to the subject. The first one that I want to talk about this evening is the block catalog, or block library, as I refer to it. Right now, I'm in my quilt embellisher, and these are the blocks that are included with the software. They are um, categorized here by album blocks, you know, and this is alphabetical, uh, alphabet blocks, basic blocks. You can also search the block catalog, <clears throat> pardon me, or block library by typing in a name. So if I want to look at um, a maple leaf block, I can type in maple, and you will see this often right here. Um, on many of our catalogs and libraries that you can search them by name up or down and you just type in a, a name or part of the name and you can click the down arrow since I was kind of at the top of the uh, library and it highlights maple star for or maple star for me if I want a different maple I just keep clicking and here's maple leaf Another click will give me another maple leaf. I keep going down, and here's maple leaf number one. It's a little bit different, you can see. Another one, maple leaf number two, which is right next to it. Keep clicking. Maple star, which is a little bit different than the other one we saw. And you can search that way. Then you can also go back up to maple leaf two. So there's a way to search through these. If you're looking for, you remembered part of the name, but not the whole name, uh, you could just type it in and search for it. Okay, so all of these are in our block catalog. Now, the block catalog in my quilt embellisher, as most of you know, contains over 2,200 blocks. They are blocks that you can, that are artwork, you can click on any of them, like pine tree number one, and pick a size, whatever, click OK, and it brings that up on your screen as artwork. All of our blocks are artwork. So if you like them, you can take and arrange them differently, and we've talked about that in different um, webinars that we've done with the software, that you can alter these pieces of artwork, but it gives you a basic place to start with if you're interested. Now, let's pull up my block piecer. I'm going down here to the bottom. I already have it open. We'll just pull that up, create a new file, so we can look at that quilt block catalog or library, however you want to refer to it. 
Now this one you notice is a little bit smaller. The reason for that is that all of these blocks can be completed entirely in the hoop. So we've eliminated the blocks that you can't piece in the hoop. And those would be those that have curved seams like Drunkard's Path, um, oh, some of the Mariner's Compass, those type of things. Also, Y seams, you can't complete that whole block in the hoop. Now, with these, bear in mind, it may take more than one hooping to do that whole block, but it is completely achievable in the hoop. In this library, we have 1,263 blocks. All of them are in the catalog or library that is in Mike Wilton Bellisher. Okay? So if you choose to build, say, this peony block number two in your hoop and then decorate it, you can go back to my quilt embellisher. Let me just click on that down here. And let's get rid of that block. And I can pull up here and look for peony, P-E-O-N-Y, and search for number two because I didn't remember. There it is. Which um, uh, block file it was in, which one of these file folders contained it. And there's peony number two, but there may be another one if we search for further. And there is, there's another peony number two right here, which is the one that we had before. So I can build it in one program and decorate it in another. Now, while we're talking about blocks and the block library, there is another way that you can create blocks, and that is by doing it yourself. Let's go um, to uh, create our own block by opening one that already exists. I'm going to go up here into my designs, which I've been playing around on here so it doesn't go straight to them, into... Um, actually, the easier way to do that, sorry about that, is to come over to the library here and down at the bottom right-hand corner, I can go through different samples that I have or different um, things that I've added in here. One is a crazy quilt block. I could do, hang on one second, I've changed computers, so let's do, let's just go up to samples and pull up a block from here, like this fox block. Let me open up a new page in the top left-hand corner. And here's a block I created myself. So if you want to create your own blocks, you can do that. Um, and that we've talked about that a little bit, and that will also be in another um, webinar. But this one, I just took an existing block, changed the colors, moved some things around, and was able to make this little fox block very simply. And right here, I'm showing it on point. So you can create your own, but what I want to tell you is that at this point, the only way to add them to your block library, if you wanted to have a library with section with just blocks you have made, would be to send them to the forum. Go into our forum in the software, go to uh, today, and right here you can click on the Inspiration Forum, and it will take you to our interactive forum and submit that block. Um, I have word from Good Authority that if you would like to add blocks, you can submit them there, and that those will be added with the new updates if you'd like to share them with everybody else. It is okay to create your own and just save them somewhere where you know where to go find them. And then you can embellish them just like you would a regular block that is from the block library. Okay, this icon right here in both Quilt Embellisher and Block Piecer. Do we have any questions on that so far, Dory? 
not so far. You've gotten everything. Um, okay. just, when you make this on point, I'm going to ask you a question. When oh, you sure. make it on point, if I wish mm -hmm. to make a square out of this or a block out of this, leaving it on point, mm -hmm. could you show us how to do that? Sure. Like this block that came from the block library, if you want to make that on point, then you simply select the entire box or block by dragging a box around it. Or you can also use Control A, hold down the Control key and press A, uh, which some people are more comfortable. And then come up to the top here where your icons are to move things. You can rotate it right or left and more than one time. You can also go over into your properties box on the right hand side where the transform icon is. Click on that and if I wanted to do something really odd like rotate this 60 degrees instead of the 45 degrees that I get by pushing the arrow, I could say 60 degrees right here and of course click apply and now I have it on a 60 degree angle. So you can do that multiple ways. Um, you can take existing blocks and change them, rotate them, of course resize them, change the colors on them, and uh, you can start with, it's kind of like starting with a cake mix, but then you add other stuff to it. So I've heard, um, <laughs> if I cooked I might know that. Uh, so I could take this portion of the block and change the color on it to so we'll come down here to our thread colors, which is also our artwork colors. And I'll right click on blue and I could change that to blue. So that's some ways that you can modify existing things that are in there. So if you don't like exactly the way it's done, you can always change it a little. Just like we did with designs in Perfect Embroidery Pro. And that's the block library. Okay, so let's look at some other libraries. Another one, um, let's go to, actually I'm going to go back to my block piecer because I haven't done all of my work this month. I'm going to close the quilt block library. When you bring up the software, you get the My Inspiration Today page. And on this page, both in block piecer and in quilt embellisher, it shows you and in PEP, which um, if any of you have that, you get five free designs every month right here. So I haven't downloaded February's designs yet. And this is a question I get frequently at seminars when I'm out on the road is where do those go? How does that work? So let's go through it step by step. And the first step is to have an internet connection so that this page displays. If you're not online, you can't download the designs. Okay? Um, I know that sounds simple, but sometimes we forget. <laughs> uh, but you do need to be online. Then when this page comes up or software and then you thought about it later, you can always come up to the top left-hand corner where it says today and click on it and you can bring that page up again. Okay, You're, you haven't lost it, it's still there. Then click on the free designs. So when I click, and that's a left click, it says what do you want to do, run or save the file? Well I find it easiest to say run it because I'm online, I can run it, and of course it wouldn't come up at all if you weren't online. If you save it, you have to remember where you saved it to. So I think run is really the easiest option because I want to get them in my library. And then it says, thank you for your download. Click OK to continue. Now, they've been downloaded, but they haven't been installed, which is what we have to do. So you can't stop here. You have to click OK. Then it brings up this menu. I want to install the designs. So that's my first option here. 
I could go other places if I want to, but right now I want to install these designs. I click on that. It brings me up another menu that says, this is the collection I want to install. Dimes February 2016 free designs. And where do I want to install them? This is your default destination folder. For those of you who, who have lost your free designs or you aren't sure where they are, they are in your C drive, Dime, then Designs, then Dime Free Designs. Okay. Then all you have to do is click Install. Select the format that you want. You can select the format for your machine, or I always just select C2S. Um, some of them are digitized in C2S, some of them are not, but if they have been, I always want that original version if I have any DIME software because that's our native format. And from that, I can save to any other format. So I click OK, and now it's done. So I just click OK. And it shows me, it shows me my um, file folder here, that is, if you look at the top here, computer, your C drive, dime designs, dime free designs, and here is February of 2016. If I click on that, it'll open up that folder for me. Now, if you don't see pictures on yours, it's um, because you don't have our Perfect Stitch Viewer software. You may see something with just names, like, um, let's go to View. You may see it look like details, just numbers like that. If you have Perfect Stitch Viewer, then you can see what the designs actually are by going into the View option, click View, and click medium, large, or extra large icons. I like large for the most part. And then it will show you a picture of each design instead of just a number, which you know really means nothing to me. But here, when I click on it, you can see a bigger image. There's a cute little rabbit. There's another rabbit. And I still haven't downloaded my pep designs, evidently, on this computer because I only have 10 instead of the 15 that I normally get. So Dory, did I lose anybody there? No, that was a good explanation. Uh, the only other thing you could point out is the reason that you have a preview pane is because you have that mm -hmm. option triggered under view. Oh, Please. okay, cool. If you go up to view. View? Yes, ma'am. Oh, yes. Okay, so in mine, I have, okay, where, do I, where do I trigger that? This I'm on Windows 7 in here, Ah. or Vista, oh. I don't know which one hey, it, it is. It, this is my older computer. Not important. Okay, so, okay, but I can get rid of, the, oh, it's right here, yes. sorry, hide the preview pane or show the preview pane. You will have something like that. Everybody's computer is set up a little bit differently and not everyone is necessarily on the same uh, operating system at the same time. <laughs> Even our own computers aren't. Uh, but that's a way that you could see it is if you have that preview option set up. Yes. Good point. Okay, now let's go back here and I'm just going to close out, exit, and if you were gone, like say, oh, I don't know, on on a trip to Europe or, you know, backpacking in the Tibetan wilderness or something, and you missed last month's designs, you can click right here on previous monthly designs. And go to that and download them the same way. Okay, I don't know why my program's busy, but that's okay. That would that is where you would do it. Oh, here it is. And you could select which month. 
it comes up. So here are Januarys and Decembers and November and so on and so forth. So if you missed a month or you're new to the software, you can go back through and download the designs in the same way we just did, but look at the previous month's designs to do that. And each software has its own set of designs. They are not the same from software to software. That's true. So if you have Quilt Embellisher, Block Piecer, and Pep, you get five free designs every month. So that's 15 unique designs uh, each month. And you can download which ones you want to. Now, let's see where those went when I downloaded those. Let's come down here in the bottom right-hand corner to our library. Now, you can switch back and forth. You have tabs here, and you may have more tabs depending on which software program you're in. Here's my sequence view of the design I have up on the screen. But my library is right here. And I can click on that. And within that library, you may not have as many folders as I do because I tend to put a lot of things in my library that I'm working on um, because it makes it easier for me to go grab them and, and bring them in. But you will have a heading that says Dime Free Designs. Right next to this, there's a little square. If it's got a plus sign, click on it and it will show you the folders within that. So this is how you can get really organized. You can have Dime Free Designs and they're organized by month and year. So if I look at December 2014, I probably have 15 designs in there or more. If I've down, well, in this case, I've downloaded them also in DST format on some of them. But those would be all the free designs that I downloaded from December of 2014. Here's February of last year, 2015. There's all of the designs. Here's February of 2016. So here we see the designs like this one that we just downloaded. Now, the unique thing with the library designs, and let me open a new page, create a new page right up here in the top left-hand corner on the opposite side. Just get rid of that design, open a new page. When I pull in a design from here, I can click on it and drag it to my screen. It has some unique characteristics. One of them, as you can see right now, is the whole design is highlighted. That means I've pulled in the whole design, and if I click on it again, it's still highlighted, which means it's grouped. So it makes it very easy for me to drag a design in and then resize it, either by pulling on one of the corners and doing it proportionally, or one of the sides and doing it um, height or width-wise. Or I could even go over to my Properties box, click on Transform, and make it a specific size. I could make this, I want to make sure it's three inches wide and maintain the aspect ratio so that the height is proportional and apply. And now I have a design that's three inches wide. Before I can do anything to any of the individual elements, because it's grouped, and this is one thing that you might get frustrated with or you might be real happy with, um, I like it that it comes in group so I can resize it. But if I'm going to play with any individual function uh, or any individual um, portion of that design, color or object, then I need to ungroup it, which that is my icon right there. I can click ungroup or I can right click and click ungroup there. Then I could click on just this segment of the leaf or just the yellow background, um, that part of the object, although there's more to it than that. And at this point, I might want to change my view on the lower right-hand side from library to sequence. And then I see I'm just picking that satin stitch because it's expanded my view on that color. Or I could pick the whole color, or that whole color. 
and change it to something different like red. And that looks really awful. So we'll move on. <laughs> Any questions on the free designs going to the library, the design library? The only question I got was from our friend Barb. And Barb said, so I can enter something I'm working on into my library. And if so, how do I do that? So she liked the oh, concept. Great, great. Let me show you how I do that. Um, let's, uh, let's open a design. I'm going to, uh, when I open a design, it will open a new page for me. And I'm just going to go up to where I've got some designs. And you can look anywhere on your computer for these, even on a stick that you might have to the side, you know, stuck in, in your, or a, a stick or a CD or, or whatever. Um, let's do, let's see, I'll pull up. I'm getting out of those designs. Just any design at all. Oh, what did I have on my blue stick? Let's look up um, border designs. And we'll go in here and select a PES design. I'm going to open that. Now, this is a design of circles. They kind of look like lifesavers to me. Uh, although I don't know what flavor the brown and the silver ones are. But here's a design that I've opened. And if I want to play with it and change it or do other things with it, I can certainly take that um, and save it. And I would do File, oops, sorry, File, Save As. And this could be designs I'm making from scratch as well. I want to save this on my C drive, and we'll go look at this folder in just a minute, under, this is where all of your library designs are, under Dime, Designs, and then I have all of these different folders. So I may um, select a new folder. Let's select a new one and say, call it Borders. Open borders, and then we'll save six uh, O's, okay? So that's what I'm going to call it, and save it there, and it will save it in whatever format I select. I do this a lot with C2S files that I'm working with, so that I can always pull them back up, even if I had created a design, saved it to my stick, and went and stitched it on one of my machines in whatever format that machine requires, I save the C2S file so I can always pull it back up in case I want to change anything. So at this point, I can come back over to my library, and let's go find it. So I'm going to show you something interesting here. Uh, here's borders, and there's my design. So I could pull it back up in the same screen and add it to this one if I want to make multiples. Anyway, that's how you save it to your designs. Now, occasionally, you may find that you can also, well, you can also work within the library itself. I can right click here and pick a folder and I can make a new folder, I can rename that folder, I can delete that folder, I can show the contents, refresh or add designs. If I wanted to add designs to borders, I could add this design that I'm working on. Uh, if I want to get rid of borders because I really don't like what I'm doing there, I can say delete folder, but it doesn't like that because the folder has to be empty. So what you have to do in that case, you've got two areas to work in. You can work in the design area and you can work in the folder area. So if I come in here and say, yeah, I don't like that design, 
I can just delete it. Yes. Then I can go back to borders, right click, click on borders, right click, and say um, delete that folder. Hmm. That should. Oh, I have to refresh first. Sorry. Whenever you change anything while the software is open, you have to refresh. So, Dory, why do you think that's not letting me delete it? It's because it's retaining it in the memory, as you said. But also, oh, we okay. need to point out that once you delete anything from this it's library, gone. it is gone. It, uh, it does not go into the recycle bin. It goes to heaven. <laughs> yes. Somewhere out there. Okay, so let's um, let's work with another folder here, because uh, I want to show you some different things in here. Um, we have things that are organized for you and things that you can organize yourself. Another place you're going to find um, inspiration collections when you download them. So I've downloaded Butterfly Majesty. Those all automatically get put in here. Now you can take and copy those. You know, if you've got a auxiliary drive that you back up to or whatever, you can copy those over there. But I put all of them in, I let them go to their default location so I can find them. Uh, which is one of the biggest challenges in my sewing room where this really comes in handy. When I've got lace borders and Vintage Holidays, and Lulu's Christmas. Now, you'll notice with some of these, I have uh, categorized them different ways. Lulu's Christmas, I have an X in front of it. Because it did not come in C2S, it's a PES design. That's just something I do for myself, for organization. I'll put an X in front of collections that I want to get to, but that um, aren't in C2S. Uh, when you save designs from Quilt Planner, uh, not Quilt Planner, from Block Piecer, it will automatically save those into your design, into this design library. So let's go see how that's done. Let's move to my Block Piecer and create a new design. Let's open up something from our block catalog or library. We'll do, well, we'll just do something simple. We'll do basic. Um, let's do nested triangles. And we can select, of course, whatever size we want. But I'm just going to pull this up. Now we're going to take it straight to up in the top left-hand corner, our workflow, select a hoop that will fit that design. I'm going to use uh, the Bernina 260 by 400 because that fits around it. For those of you who um, are not following what I'm doing right here, all of this information is in the webinars for my block piecer and my uh, decorative quilter so that, I'm sorry, my quilt embellisher, um, so that you can see how it's done. I just want to show you where these end up going. So I have created this block. Now we're going to auto build it. We'll look at the preview and we can save it. And when I save it, it should, which this one isn't because I was doing something else with it, go straight to, and you may have to do this yourself if you've been playing around, go straight to um, C, Dime, Designs, and then you've got, uh, we'll call it Nested Triangle and we'll save it in our C2S format. And that's exactly where it ends up if you look at the folders here, Dime, Designs, Nested Triangle. Okay, so now 
when I'm done, if I had resized that and changed some things with it or whatever, I can go into my quilt embellisher and I'm going back to my design library and I'm going to scroll down looking for nested triangles and guess what? It's not there because I've added that since this program was opened. You see I've got nested but not nested triangles. I'm going to right click and say refresh. Now I have nested triangle and there's my block. So if I wanted to pull in my C2S block to decorate it, I could do that. You have to remember if you have files or programs that are opened, they don't get automatically refreshed when you save new things to the library. Do we have questions there, Dory? No, uh, we do not. Um, so far, apparently, these ladies are following you completely. Okay. So the, the easiest thing to do is just click and say refresh, and it will refresh um, so that you have the new stuff. If you say, if I was going to decorate this and save it, it wouldn't show me it to me until I refreshed again. And you can refresh in both the file folders as well as within the folder itself. Okay, so if I did something with this, um, I could refresh that as well. So that is your design library. Um, it will save it automatically in some cases if you haven't changed where you're saving it. If you want to save it to another location, like to your stick or something like that, um, or a diskette or however it is you get your designs to your machine, it, then you may have to change it. But remember that in your when you go to look at your files, and here I'm going to go back to my C drive, and I look for dime, and it's alphabetical. Just click on dime with a lowercase d. Within dime, I have my designs, and I can click on that, and it will show me all of the folders that I have within my design library. Now, you can put as much stuff as you want in here or as little stuff as you want. I find that if I just save my C2S files in here, that it makes it much easier, and my working files that I go to a lot, it makes it easier for me to find things. Um, okay, so we're going to switch gears a little bit here, and one of the catalogs libraries that we got with Quilt Embellisher and Plot Piecer is the Fabrics. Now, let's take a look at the Fabric Library. I'm going to show you a little bit how it works as well as how you can enhance it. So, let's select our block that we brought in here. I want to ungroup it, first of all, because I pulled it in from the Design Library. Let's ungroup. I just want to select certain colors from this block. I can do that by clicking on the individual colors and hold, while I hold down the control key. That's one way to do it. Another way that could be more expedient is to come over here. We're in the bottom right-hand corner and click on your sequence view. In my sequence view, I have the pink tiles or patches, and I have the blue ones. So I could just click on that blue, and I've selected all three of them. So depending on how your block is laid out, if the colors are all together, which usually they are when you pull them in from the library, but if you change things, they may not be, uh, you can just click on it there. Or you can do control click uh, in here. Now, let's open up the fabric icon. So if I click that, it opens up my fabric library. Now, we give you a pretty massive fabric library. So it takes it a minute the first time you open it after um, your machine has been reviewed, rebooted or shut down. 
So give it a second because there's thousands of fabrics in here. All of these fabric tiles, okay? So we have, this looks a lot like all of our libraries where um, if I click the minus sign, I don't see anything in my subdirectories. Click the plus sign, and here are all my petite textiles. Here are all of my Moda United Notions, and all of these come with both my quilt embellisher and my block piecer, okay, so that you've got some fabrics to play with. Now, does that mean that it's going to have every fabric that you own? Absolutely not. Uh, are we going to update this for you? Yeah, probably not, because if we kept up with just those two manufacturers, you would run out of disk space really fast. So this gives you a good basis to start with. Like you've got some solids here. We could change that blue to this teal fabric and see what that looks like. And that's kind of pretty. But, you know, it doesn't really show us much. We could do that with thread color. Or we could come over here and pick um, some different fabric lines. Oh, what do we want? And scroll through them because um, ooh, that's kind of pretty. Let's do this one. So you can audition fabric before you ever cut it which is really nice. Uh, now let's pick the pink patches over here in our sequence view and find a fabric for them. And it could be one of these or it could be something different. Let's try, hmm. you know, if you don't have that collection, maybe you want to do something different. Like, hmm, let's try that. And that's about the ugliest block I've ever seen. Uh, so we want to, this is the, the advantage of auditioning fabrics. We have a huge fabric library with all of the moda and all of the batik textiles. However, if you want to add to it, it's very simple. You can uh, come in here. And just like adding to your design library, I can right click over here and create a new folder. Okay? Oops, that's under wishes. Let me right click under fabrics and create a new folder. And I'm going to call it um, Tamara Stash. And actually, you can put a space in there or not and create a new folder. Now, to add fabrics to this, it's very simple. I can right click, click add, and then go out on my computer where I have found fabrics and saved images of them, which I'll tell you about in just a second. Um, let me go to my C drive and expand this a little bit so I can see it better. I want to go to Fabric Images, and here are some images I just added today. One of them is a fabric that's uh, Michael Miller Eiffel Tower, so I want to add that. I just click on it and say Open, and now it's added to my stash. So I'm going to right-click again, Add, and I'm going to add this um, scanned fabric and say Open and OK. Now I have both of those in my fabric library. Let's go to Tamara Stash, and there they both are. If I want to add another one, I can add, and it's going to take me back to the same place. So if you have a folder somewhere on your computer where you save these, maybe it's to a stick, maybe it's to you know fabric images or whatever, you can add them very simply that way. And now we have two of them on there, or three of them. And I could select one of those for the pink fabric. Let's come back up now to my fabric stash, 
click Tamara Stash and add the Eiffel Tower fabric. And there you go. Now, the other fabric doesn't look that good with it. We can audition something else. But the more important thing this evening is to talk about how you get that fabric in there. Now, this is a fabric. The Eiffel Tower is a fabric that um, I had. And I got yardage of it, not a whole lot, but enough, that I can look on the selvage edge. And let's come over here. And I've got another one similar to that that I've got in front of me. Um, and I typed in what was on the salvage edge. It was Isabel Christmas. Anna Griffin is the artist. And oftentimes it gives you the number of the collection. But in this case, I just clicked images. And this is the fabric that I'm looking at, this one right here. Although that's not going to look really good plugged into a block or an applique or whatever in when I add fabric. So let me look for a better image, which would be, oh, right down here on the bottom right-hand side. All I have to do is right-click and say, Save Image As. Then it opens up my dialog box. And I'm in Tamara Downloads, which is not really where I want to be. I want to go to um, my C drive and go to Fabric Images. And let's add it as um, AG Christmas and save that one. Now, if I go back to my software, to my Quilt Embellisher, and I can add that into my Fabric Library. So I'm going to select, not that these necessarily go together, but I'm going to select those three blue blocks and click on my fabrics. I'm going to go to all the way down to the bottom to Tamara Stash and click on that. Then right click, add the, the fabric I just saved. Now I can click on that and say OK. And we will have a French Christmas block <laughs> with the Eiffel Towers and the uh, other. Question story. Well, I have a question from our friend Linda. And she wants to uh -huh. know, can you add multiple fabrics at one time by selecting more than one by um, um, holding down the control key? You know what? That's a great question. And I don't know the answer, so let's try it. Um, let me just select something so I can get into my fabrics. You can always directly copy them in there. Um, I know, let's do this. Let me select, hmm, no, I need to add. Okay. Let's add. Um, evidently, we can. And it didn't show you the multiples there, but yes, that was a very good question. If I had downloaded a lot of designs, like I go to a website and I download everything in a collection, I could do that and, and then add them at one time. And I would recommend if they do that to A, be prepared to have a very sluggish computer and B, <laughs> yeah. I would suggest that they do this in a 100 by 100 size. You know what, and Dory, I was just going to get into that. That's a very good point. Um, you notice here I have two different fabrics, and I'm actually going to switch over to my file folder so you can see these a little bit better and go to see fabric images. and. Here is one fabric, and this is a fabric that I bought just recently um, at a big box store. Um, and I scanned this 
because on the salvage edge, it said made exclusively for <coughs> um, and with no other information. So I couldn't find it. I couldn't search for it on the internet. So this one, I actually took the fabric and put it on my flatbed scanner and scanned it. And the representation of the color came out like almost perfect. I mean, it's, it's very, very close. Now, I could have straightened it up a little bit when I did that. But the other thing that you can do, scanning is one way to get an image in. Another thing you can do is take a photograph. And this is the photograph of the same fabric. I am not a good photographer. <laughs> and um, it's kind of blown out here, a little more orangish than in real life. Um, this is a better color representation. So if I'm really looking to and this is my photography skills, not necessarily anybody else's. If I'm looking to get a better match, then I'm going to scan it. Uh, with the exception of shiny fabric, it scans kind of, um, you get a little funkiness in there because of the sheen from the light. Uh, it, you may be better off photographing that. But if you've got the fabric right in front of you, that's very easy to do. My first choice in adding fabric to my library is to find it online. Now, this Anna Griffin fabric right here was from 2010. Okay, so if you've got fabric that has been made, you know, in the last at least 16 years, maybe even 20 years, uh, then there's a very good chance if you can Google uh, or search whatever is written on the salvage, then you're going to find it and you can save an image. If you have fabric that uh, you've had since, you know, before the internet was invented <laughs> or that you can't find online, then I would suggest scanning it or photographing it. Just see, you know, where your skills take you, but you can certainly get an image of that. And you don't need a real high-res image. Um, most of the ones online are going to be just perfect. You'll notice on this one of the Eiffel Towers, it does scale it. Um, and if I scroll out or scroll in, it doesn't really change the size. But the important thing about the fabric is that it's showing me the color. And that's what I'm really looking for here, not necessarily the pattern um, and the way the pattern is portrayed. Does that make sense, Dory? That makes a lot of sense. Um, I, so we're not doing this for the scale of the print. We are doing this just for the color. For the, absolutely, absolutely, because um, you could spend a lot of time, especially if you're doing something, let's say, with, um, let's just select these blue pieces. If you're doing something with stripes, um, the stripes may not be going anywhere near the way you want them to. This can be really ugly, I'm just warning you. Um, those are going up and down. If I was going to put, like, black and white stripes on there, they would be at an angle, which means I would need to angle my fabric swatch, uh, which you could get. But frankly, at that point, you know if it's going to work or not, I think. Um, the scale is not true to life, but the color can be, which is really the more important part, I think. Super. Thank you. So other questions? Nope, we're good. Um, the moderators have knocked out the questions here and awesome. you've done a really nice job of clearing up the, the basics of the software. Can you go in one more time and explain to us the difference between my block pacer, my quilt embellisher, my quilt planner? Can you give us a bird's eye view of what each one sure. of the oh. programs is? Absolutely. And you know, this is the way um, I like to explain it. I like to use food analogies, not because I cook, but because I eat. Um, and my 
my block piecer is the one I'll start off with. My block piecer allows you to create a block. And um, I encourage you to go back and look at the previous webinars on that. You can create a block completely in the hoop or partially in the hoop. It's, it's about making the foundation okay, for, for a quilt. Um, you can do part of it. You can do all of it. You can add seam allowances. You can send it to cutters, which we've talked about and will again um, shortly in a, a webinar. Um, it's the foundation. It's the cake, whether it's a cupcake, a sheet cake, a bunt cake, um, a carrot cake, a chocolate cake, a lemon cake, pound cake, whatever shape or form it is, it's the foundation. Okay? Then my quilt embellisher, <laughs> it's all about the decorating. It's the frosting. It's the sprinkles. It's the candles. It's the fondant. It's uh, the roses, it's, you know, all of that, the, the ganache, uh, one of my new favorite things, um, the, the hot fudge, you know, whatever it is that you put over that basic cake. Then my quilt planner is, which we haven't really talked about, but there's not that many libraries in there. Um, most of them are done before you get to this stage. Um, my quilt planner is the way you're setting up your dessert buffet on the table. It's how you put design the whole thing to work together. So it's you're looking at the whole quilt, not just at a block, not just at a design. You're looking at the entire decoration. That is super. Did that paint a picture that everybody wants to go now and? Uh, <laughs> dig into their uh, refrigerator or find a dessert somewhere in the house. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, one of the things, too, that I was going to mention with uh, either my quilt planner or block piecer, the fabric library is shared. Okay? So whenever I click on the fabric library here or the one in block piecer, it's the same library. So if I add fabrics, it all goes to the same place. Which means, instead of setting up Tamara Stash, I could do that in several different folders. I could say, the hall closet, under the bed, on the shelves in the guest room. Wherever I have that fabric stored, <laughs> I can organize it that way. Um, that it's all shared. And if you have Perfect Embroidery Pro, while you don't have the fabric icon, if you have My Quilt Embellisher or My Block Piecer, when you click under Commands on Fabric, you will have access to that same library as well. Super. Thank you so much, Tamara. Oh, thank you, Dory. And I hope and everybody, everybody has learned. And send all your blocks into the forum. I want to see what you do, and we get some new blocks added to our software. All right. Thank you again, everybody. Have a good evening. Good night.